November the 9th, 2022. Guys, you're looking at current images as the sun sets of Tropical Storm Nicole. It's still, as of the last report, at 70 miles an hour. In just four more miles an hour, it will become uh, Hurricane Nicole. It looks like at this point that it will remain a Category 1. It could strengthen just a little bit more than that because one thing it has not done is cross the uh, Gulf Stream. And guys, you, if you understand what the Gulf Stream is, it comes in uh, when it's doing uh, what it's supposed to do and circulates through the Gulf, comes back out the tip of Florida and moves north up along the East Coast. So that storm is not quite there yet. But it is over sections of the Bahamas that we saw get pelted two years ago when a, was it a Cat 4, Cat 5 set on top of it? And we saw 20-foot waves coming into uh some of the houses there in the Bahamas. But uh, this thing is, again, the tropical storm force winds. This morning, when I first started looking at this, extended out 400 miles. And I started looking at the Flagler Beach piers and things like that in the Florida beach cams, and it looked like there was a Cat 1 hurricane already. But uh, this thing is strengthening. Look at how much energy is being pulled into this thing all the way as far as north as you can see here, which is up along um, the uh, North Carolina shores, Nags Head, uh, the Outer Banks. Look at that. That's how much is being pulled in here now. By this Saturday, which we got tomorrow, Friday here, and then Saturday we're supposed to get some pretty cold weather. Now, that will be on the 11th. This storm will still be active up along the East Coast by then. Will we start to see this moisture start to accumulate uh, with these colder temperatures? I think we're going to be in the 30s here in central Mississippi this weekend and not get much warmer, maybe up into the upper 40s, low 50s. So we need to uh, pay attention to that. The, there's a lot going on on this planet Earth. The demons are running hard, and they're running wild. And guys, let me say this, and I want to apologize. Last night, uh, we were watching live the election results, and suddenly everything shut down. My internet shut down, and uh, I went up, I looked around trying to find out what was going on, and I went over and checked out my modem, and it, it was scalding hot. I unplugged it, let it cool off, actually set it in front of the air conditioner, and uh, finally it took about an hour to get everything reset and working again and by that time i was exhausted and I, so but anyway I, I did not plan for that to happen but we we're seeing some good and bad out of that election um, the leading um the leading agent of the attack on the j6 stuff and it's still continuing they're subpoenaing trump uh banning all of them She's gone. Liz Cheney got massacred. Now, uh, we had some things in Philadelphia that uh, you it had to be like a Twilight Zone movie because the guy's and that na last name starts with an F that is not really coherent won that. Now, let me say this because he was running against Oprah's friend, Dr. Oz. And that kind of seems odd to me. Who really, is it still that lady that is running the Democrat, I mean, Republican committee? Is that who, is Dr. Oz, who is who you're going to put to compete in Pennsylvania to pull the seat back, really? Although, even though the F man won it, there was a lot going on there, guys. That guy could not get 10 votes. Honestly. Honestly. You know it. We know it. Unless they shipped in everybody that's uh, around the nation in there to vote that that's uh, probably from California. Ship those guys in. But um, now I'm not talking about my conservative friends in California, but we know what uh, Newsom has done. And by the way, he made it. Um, we Sarah Huckle, uh, Huckabee got in the uh, uh, press lady for trump she's the governor of arkansas that's the same way her dad was and I, i've got a good feeling about her because she always came off as someone that's honest and she understood the corruption so congratulations arkansas on that again desantis is in uh, rubio came in um matter of fact desantis won by 1.5 million votes 
It's incredible. Isn't it? Now, let me say this. We're going to look at the rest of the hurricane information. But uh, if you remember maybe a week ago that uh, Trump came in and kind of threw a slur at DeSantis a couple of days before the election, what was that about? And then he came back the next day or two days later and apologized. But how did that affect? Now, again, DeSantis cleaned house in Florida. It was a red hurricane tidal wave. But why was Trump doing that? Why is, and why did, you know, we, you understand what Operation War Speed is and him pushing the V's and probably invested heavy in the P company, PH company. But um, he he did a rally, was it last night or night before last, and uh, many expected him to announce whether or not he would run in the 2024 election. He didn't say he said he would announce what, guys, after this, like November the 16th or 18th, after he saw what was going to happen here, right? And so he also he stepped down pretty quickly quickly and got out of Dodge after what we saw in 2022. Now, I hope I'm not getting too far out there, but put the pieces of this puzzle together. We're talking about two wings of the same bird. But he did not have the courage before he found out who the Senate and House was going to be. And he still we still don't know totally because there's still some vote counting going on. He didn't, he didn't want to announce until he knew that he had the power base under him that would solidify the election and that's how cowards do it that's how democrats do it when they know that there's going to be certain things going on with the voting machines that solidify their election so trump was not willing to take that step and say no matter what happens tuesday night on the 8th i'm there we're going to fight through this thing no he was waiting he was just like a coward would do and see if he had the uh, the the backup. And that's not how a general in an army can work. I mean, the leader of the army, he's got to lead in there and say, well, regardless of what happens tonight, we're going to fight this thing through all the way to the end. He didn't do that. He didn't have the courage to do it. He didn't have the courage to step into 2022. He just walked off two wings of the same bird. And Christ told us, guys, no man, no man. And in the book of Timothy said, there is no mediator. And this was, this, I can't believe that the priest left that in the Bible. But Timothy said, there is no mediator between you and your father in heaven. No priest, no preacher, anything. No politician. But again, if Trump had had an ounce of you know what, and that was maybe it was Pennsylvania a couple of nights ago or last night. I think it was night before last, before the election. He would have said, I'm going to stand tall. I'm not going to wait and see if I've got the backup so that I'm not embarrassed. And when you see that mentality, guys, that is not a leader. I don't care what you say. Of course, I want the conservative side to win this. We have to do some things to change what's happening because we're in it we're like a snowball running downhill to hell right now maybe that was a merle haggard song i can't remember you guys in oklahoma but a snowball running downhill now again think about what i'm telling you because you know that i was a conservative republican voter in the last several elections but something's up with this. When he did not, he was afraid to commit until he saw the backup. Now, what if the generals in the armies were afraid to commit when they were defending their territory unless they saw they had the backup? Then you would be overrun. So, guys, you need to pay attention. and You need to look in a different direction of what's going on. Why did he throw DeSantis under the bus right before that? He was expecting a uh, red tide, red tsunami. And because of the irregularities in the voting, that did not happen. I don't think it had anything to do with the real vote. But, again, 
not a leader. Maybe a good businessman, but not a leader in what we need right now. I don't know who will step in there, but my bet is that Jesus Christ is going to come in here and uh, do a number on a bunch of demons. That's my hope, and I know it is, and I know it's true, because that's what he said he's going to do. We're going to go through some things before that, but the more that we trust men, I think the further we get away from the truth. Let's look at some of these models. Now, guys, this is not the first time this has happened. Again, it is now 5, 12 p.m., 12 minutes ago. That was before I started, I mean, after I started the video. Nicole has changed to 75 miles per hour, so we have a hurricane now. So all the, it's a hurricane here coming off the Bahamas, and look at the approach. It looks like the center would possibly be just north of Lake Okeechobee, but remember, you got, we've, you've already been getting tropical storm winds all day in this section of Florida. Now, it looks like a crisscross pattern from what uh, Hurricane Ian did. And look at this Thursday at 1 a.m. Guys, that's how I many this it's 513 here now. So uh, that would be what seven hours. Not quite seven hours. This thing's coming ashore on you guys at the worst possible time. Right after midnight, everyone's tired. You wanted to go to bed. But now is not the time to do it, especially if you're along the coast. But uh Look at what it's going to do, pull back into the Gulf, according to this. That will allow it to re-strengthen somewhat before it pulls back in to somewhere west of Apalachicola into Georgia and back up into the western sections of South Carolina. Now, that's as far as this um, map goes. We'll have to check on that because the other models are showing that it resurfaces into the Atlantic somewhere in the northeast coast. Now again, 14 minutes ago, they updated the spaghetti models. The Navy model right here in the purple is the further, uh, it's the furthest north as far as the tracking, and uh, or north and northwest or northeast, excuse me. Purple line here crossing in Jacksonville. Now the Canadian model is very close. It's not coming into Jacksonville, but it's coming back out into the Gulf of Mexico slightly and then re-entering. And coming up through that trail, we were talking about coming through uh, uh, western South Carolina. But if you look at these spaghetti models up above where they've got the com uh, computer model logo here, they're all, it's still continuing, and some of them have them coming back out into the Atlantic. Now, even though this thing may not become a Cat 1 hurricane, just look at some of the buoy readings that are current as of uh, about. 10 minutes ago, 12 minutes ago, 6.04, 23 feet here. The storm's located right here. Look at how far these winds extend out. 18 feet between the storm and just west of Lo or east of Lake Okeechobee. Moving up Cape Canaveral, 24 feet, 22 feet in Jacksonville. There's a tremendous amount of energy in this storm to be as small as it is 10 feet surf down along southern florida what would that be boca raton down in that area and look at across the uh florida peninsula into the gulf that's the seas but this is going to change when this thing comes across tonight you're going to start seeing all of this seven six and five four foot wave heights change and that's going to push it up into apalachicola and you all of my friends in pensacola and uh, Perdido, Fort Walton, Gulf Shores, you know where I'm talking about, Orange Beach. Pay attention to what this thing does after it comes across the peninsula of Florida. Will it veer right back right? It's going to depend on that big high pressure area that's coming across the U.S. from west to east or left to right. But this is a powerful storm. Again, it amazed me this morning that we were having tropical storm winds 400 miles out from the center of a tropical storm like that. You can, I've seen it in a hurricane, a big hurricane, and your winds are extending that far, but that was very powerful for that. Now, let's take a look at the models. Almost forgot. Let's look at the radar, then we're going to the models. You can see the northern islands of Bahama right here. Look at the center of circulation. It's pretty large, but you're already starting to get 
the uh, rain in at Port St. Lucie. Again, this morning I was looking at um, webcams along this area of Florida, and it was already the piers were closed or waves very high on them. But that's, you're not far. Again, they're talking about 1 p.m. this thing coming ashore, guys. So anywhere up Interstate 95 and north of there. Now, this thing is, has not turned back north yet. It's expected to maybe turn north and just the lower section of the center of circulation uh, skirt the northern section of Lake Okeechobee. Either way, guys, you're going to be in very high winds, a lot of winds, a lot of rain, excuse me, possible tornadoes in this area. Now, when it first gets into the Lake Okeechobee area, a lot of a lot of people there, fishermen, hunters, and things like that, you're going to start getting your wind coming out of the north, just like you are now. But that's going to change very quickly. And then up along Orlando, you're going to be getting the brunt of this depending on where it comes across the uh, peninsula. Tampa, you're going to have to watch it. Remember, it's predicted to come back into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this is the Navy model. Check that out. This has it skirting north of Lake Okeechobee. You see that? And that's how the purple line that we were seeing on the spaghetti models were. Strengthening and then blowing back out up north, somewhere maybe around D.C. in that area. Check it out. It is not coming back out along Nags Head, much further north than that. High pressure is pushing it out to sea. Now, like we've watched for many years, that once the Canadian model and the Navy model, let me pull that up a little, CMC model here, come together, then you can pretty much count on that track coming in. This is starting to show the CMC also moving it north, or the center of circulation now, north of Lake Okeechobee, back touching into the Gulf and back almost the same path the Navy has it. Look at that. So if I was north of Lake Okeechobee, I would be paying very close attention to that because anything north is going to catch that uh, northeast quadrant of the storm. That's where the most power is. And once you get into the Gulf of Mexico, just that edge right there, it's going to pick up a little bit of stream, I mean of steam, and because it's going to have one foot back into some very warm water. And this could change. What we've got to watch now is that by 1 a.m. this thing's coming ashore on you guys. Now look at your hurricane watches. You've got in the darker red, of course, the Bahamas are included here, but north of Miami going all the way up. Uh, you're covering, what, half of the Florida east coast right there with torn, uh, hurricane warnings. Hurricane watches at Okeechobee. And uh, in the yellow areas here, you've got all these. You're going to possibly ability of tornadoes. Tropical storm warnings are up in all of this area. Tropical storm watch coming in right here in the blue area, guys, into Georgia. So it's going to be a rough night, guys. Hunker down. I would keep, I would try to stay awake as long as I could. Make sure everything's buckled down. You still got about four or five hours if you need to. Uh, right now, the sun's setting, beautiful red sunset here in central Mississippi. So you guys on the East Coast, you're an hour behind that. And it's probably pretty dark. But just go outside, check it out. You don't want a, a lawn chair or a garbage can to come through one of your windows on the front. But And uh, again, being a Cat 1, maybe we will not see the damage to the electrical grid and the houses and all of that that we saw with Ian. But you're going to have some electrical outages. So, and something else. Once you have a couple storms back to back, like you guys down in Florida have had, um, sometimes you can become somewhat jaded to it and say, well, it's just another hurricane. And I've seen that in some of the reports. But, um, guys, this thing can become deadly very quickly. Simply one tornado spout or spouted up and coming in ashore from a water spout or anything else can destroy a home worse than a Category 5 can. So be aware of that. It's just not a good time to just chill out and say nothing's going to happen. Because you want to be prepared. If a tree comes down on your house, you want to be prepared if you got to move. Get your family together. Things like that can occur in this situation. Flooding can occur. You already got storm surge warnings and watches going up along the entire area here. But I'm going to end it, guys. I've already been rambling for almost 20 minutes. But this is important. That's pretty, that area there, 
again, has been through it in that section of Florida. You've got the citrus crops. There, I've got friends down there that are coming out, like I mentioned, I think last night out of Perdido, that they do tree cutting and things like that. They're in the Fort Myers area, and they're pretty devastated. There's still trash on the roads that they can't pick up. And if you think about that, you know, people getting out sheetrock, carpet, whatever they have to have out of these flood damaged homes, all of that's going to become uh, debris and projectiles in a Category 1 hurricane. So if you live outside and all of that's piled up on your street and you're one of these areas, you need to be aware of that. We're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.